Hello, I'm Faye and I bought 19 books last week. Uh, I went to Berlin to visit some friends and family and I went to, well, more than five bookshops, but I bought books in five bookshops. Um, and I thought I'd give you a run through, get your opinions on all of these. I didn't go out with anything in mind, just um, purely being carried away by my ecstasy of having all these wonderful bookshops at my disposal, which um, usually I don't in the smaller town where I live. The first bookshop I went to is the Curious Fox bookshop in Neukölln. Um, I have like a nice little bookmark to show you just so that I, I don't really know. Ooh, multimedia, Curious Fox. Um, and they have a small curated collection of new books, but mainly sell used secondhand copies of people that donate them. And I got Letters to the End of Love by Yvette Walker, which is an Australian author. And in this epistolary novel, she tells us the story of three couples and how their well, story unfolds in the form of letter. Um, we're covering the 30s, the 60s, 2010s, how do you say that, 10s, um, and um, couples, partners living in Ireland, England, Australia, maybe Germany or Austria, not sure. Um, and I just think this is a really nice way to be told a story. Also, having been in a long distance relationship for quite a long time, um, I think there is quite a romance uh, about getting to know about a love story in the form of letters. Also, this book is so beautiful. I'm, you can't really, the camera doesn't do it justice, but there's almost like this sort of stenciled relief. It's, it's really nice, all these different stamps. Um, so that's the first and the second and final book I got from The Curious Fox is I Captured the Castle by Dodie Smith. This uh, book written in the 40s, I believe, um, is um, again a bit of a unique way of telling a story because now we have the journal entries of the main character Cassandra, I believe her name is. This made the round a little bit on booktube for, I don't know, was there a reason? I felt like recently people have been reading this. Uh, Cassandra writes in her journal about her sort of poor, impoverished family um, and how she falls in love for the first time. Um, and it was cheap and cheerful and in an edition I liked, so I picked it up. Then. I went to the Book Nook. They have three different stores in Berlin. I went to the one that is also in Icon. Um, I think I didn't actually plan my route and um, went on the same day. Oh well. Um, this is a used bookshop where you kind of have to dig through a little bit more. They have um, quite a large selection of non-fiction books as well um, and the people that work there are always up for a chat which I think is nice the guy that was um, checking me out at the end he uh, told me that he studied at the same university as me um, which was nice um, 50 years prior to me but still super interesting um, I got Miss Pettigrew's live Miss Pettigrew lives for a day mm by Winifred Watson. I've never heard of this. Um, the premise does sound cool. It's 24 hours in the life of this governess who goes to work for a nightclub singer. Um, and that's also how the book is made up, like with the hours one to two, two to three, something like that. Um, I only picked this up because this uh, is a Persephone edition and I live in Germany and I never get to join the hype of everyone talking about Perse Persephone books. So, that was my superficial reasoning of picking up this book. I hope it's good. The next six books are from my possibly favorite, well, my favorite used bookshop in Berlin. Um, the guy is a, who owns the shop is a friend of my dad, so I am biased. Um, and I got a bit of a friendship deal as well. Um, but that's St. George's Bookshop in Prenzlauer Berg. Um, and this is, Although it's a used bookshop, they also have a few new books, you can order books, and they've just managed to give the whole shop a really neat look, which I appreciate because it's really difficult if you only have used books, everything, you know, is sort of mismatched and dented, and they just have a really good collection and it's really fun um, to look through it. Also, they have um, like floor to ceiling shelving and one of those swishy ladder things so that mm, can make you feel like, I don't know, something out of a Disney movie, I guess. Um, 
I got six books, the first one being um, Haruki Murakami's Men Without Women. Um, I used to read quite a lot of Murakami when I was younger, not so much um, in recent years, I think this is 2014, something like that. Um, I thought I'd give it a try, a short story collection about men without women. Uh, I do like his writing style, um, and I also liked the, the look of this book. I have a Mary Beard, is it something like that? Mary Beard um, non-fiction book that looks really similar, so uh, even more superficially I thought, wow, they'd look great standing next to each other. Mm. Yeah, this. Then I got two John Wyndham books. I got The Chrysalids and I got, what's this called, The Midwitch Cuckoos. Um, so both of these written in the, is it the 50s? I'm slowly, slowly working my way through John Wyndham's book after having discovered him last year. Um, they are all sort of sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, um, sort of very, very little horror um, stories, and they're all kind of dated now. <laughs> and I just think that gives it a whole new quality. Um, so the Midwitch Cuckoos, uh, in the sleepy English village of Midwich, a mysterious silver object appears and all the inhabitants fall unconscious. A day later, the object is gone and everyone wakens unharmed, except that all the women in the village are discovered to be pregnant. Dun, dun, dun. Alien pregnancies. Um, and the chrysalids is um, about post-apocalyptic mutant stuff. So they're all kind of similar in that vein, but I've loved everything I've read so far. Um, then I got Fiona Mosley's Elmet. This also kind of made the rounds two, well, one year. When did this come out? Mm, one year ago. Mm. On the booktube, I kind of let it slip because of uh, hype. Uh, but now I'm ready for it. And uh, this, I believe, follows maybe two siblings and their father and how they sort of live out in the secluded woods and we don't really know whether this is a sort of survivalist crazy family or whether there's actually something going on if there's like bad people trying to get them we don't know i'll find out then i got to the book of hidden things by what's francesco dimitri hmm, unusual name um this I just thought it looked really great. Um, I'm expecting sort of magical realism hints in here. Uh, on the surface, all I know so far is that it is about four friends who meet on the same day every year in their hometown, and one day, one year, one of them doesn't show up. He is sort of the most charismatic, interesting, charming out of the bunch, and they soon discover um, that A, he's been sort of mixed up in sort of criminal machinations and also he's sort of been writing the book of hidden things and I think it all that turns a bit sort of dark and eerie um I'm hoping it's good don't know um and then the final book I got at St George's bookshop is Proust and the Squid by Marianne Wolf uh this is a non-fiction book about um, our brains and how they had to develop in order to read and how the written word changed I think over the years and how we adapted. There's also I think a chapter on dyslexia and how that might actually not be such a bad thing uh, when it comes to reading and writing. I'm not sure, I think this is probably a sort of uh, mix of linguistics, neurology and a little bit of history. Um, and with non-fiction November coming up, this might be good. Then my mum got three books for me that I chose in Dustman, which is like the huge, huge multi-story um, bookshop in Berlin. Um, and they have a sort of slightly secluded English bookshop part, which um, makes you feel like you're in a smaller shop all by itself. Mm. Long preamble. I got Friday Black by Nana Kwari Ajay Brenya. Mm, not... I, I hope, I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. This is a collection of short stories, um, all talking about racism in the US, I believe, but sort of with a sci-fi twist. Um, it's not very long and I've had really good experiences with reading short story collections by one author recently. I used to turn my nose up at short stories and I think this could actually be something I really, really enjoy. Um, 
he's like a young guy, I think he's like 27, something like that, which, you know, always makes me feel so, so inferior to like what I've, I've done in life. He's got this beautiful looking book, um, came out this year, I believe, and I'm actually really, really excited for this one. Um, I also got How Should a Person Be by Sheila Hetty. Um, I originally was in the bookshop looking for her recent release called Motherhood, uh, but that was still in hardback. I, if given the choice, I prefer reading things in paperback, and this um, came out a few years ago. Um, and in this, Sheila Hetty, well, <laughs> asked people how should a person be in her surroundings, and this is a compilation of emails, letters, phone calls, and a good dose of fiction. Um, all about sort of the, the conversation she has about that question. Um, I think it kind of taps into my angst of the looming 30 next year. Um, and I, everything is better when shared. So I'm really enjoying reading about her ruminations um, on, I don't know, how should a person be, I guess. And then the final book that I've been creeping around for ages, so I finally just broke down and got it, is um, The Child Finder by Renee Denfeld. Uh, a while back I read uh, The Enchanted by her, which I loved. So I'm really eager to read The Child Finder, especially because the storyline, this um, private investigator called Naomi Cotter searching for missing children when everyone else has given up, is something that I think I'll enjoy, and I think she has like a dark secret. Uh, also checking this on Goodreads, I believe that um, Renee Denfeld has decided to turn this into a series. The second one will be coming out in 2019, so it's about time that I jump on board. And then I got two more books from, well, possibly my favourite bookshop. Not my favourite secondhand bookshop, but my favourite bookshop in Berlin. Um, you get letters, uh, your books in a sort of vegetable and fruit like bag if you ask for one and the shop is called Otherland um, and they specialise on fantasy, science fiction and they also have some horror, fantasy and sci-fi books and I got The Genius Plague by David Walton which is about um, a, a pandem pandemic Pan pandemic is that what you say that breaks out um and it seems that the only effect of this disease that's come from the jungles will turn people super super intelligent and then it's like sort of the battle between two um men brothers oh that would be even more exciting i'm not sure two men one takes a really critical view thinks that this sort of symbiotic relationship the person being the host for this disease um, can only go bad and the other's like hey it's great we're all super clever now. Um, I uh, really love these sort of post-apocalyptic um, stories if that's what you want to call it. Uh, I'd never heard of it before and that's just the beauty of this shop. The chances are pretty high that you'll find something that you'll like and be interested in if you're into sci-fi, fantasy, all genres, why be confined by genres. Uh, and then I got The Beauty by Aaliyah Whitley, is that what she's called? Um, and this is a short little book, even shorter than it looks because it has a short story of hers in the back. Um, and this is set in a world without women and the men gather each night to tell each other stories and one of the new stories that pops up is about the beauty um, and mysterious looking fungi, I think, that grow on the soil that covers the corpses of the women. Well, it sounds really spooky. I think this is probably like a really solid dose of fantasy verging into horror. Uh, I think it sounds excellent. Um, so yeah, I think all of these sound great, to be honest. I'm kind of um, justifying the amount of time that I spent going through the bookshops um, and the money that I spent on the fact that I, I would like to read each and every one of these right now. Um, so that was my book haul, better not get much more um, in the coming months because my boyfriend is already telling me off almost every day. So 
I will check in with you very, very soon with potentially my non-fiction November plans. Um, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.